how is it going guys? So, in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to create Saturn with its characteristic rings in Blender. This time it's everything nodes, we did not use any external textures, just the node editor, despite the star background of course. Alright, let's start with the default scene, delete everything and add a new sphere. To this let's add a new camera and give it a real, real long focal length, since all images from Saturn are shot with a, with a telescope most of the times. So let's set it to 1.25 meters and move it really far away. Let's now create our rings, add a circle and scale it up. Let's select all vertices and extrude them and scale them in to create this disk. Now let's go to front autographic view and rotate the whole planet to around 45 degrees I think and let's lean it slight bit towards the camera so we can see a bit more of the rings. Let's change the inner radius and yeah, let's now do our first render, of course, in Cycles Render Engine. I'd like to enable image denoising with open image denoising at a start sample of 30. So it's a bit more responsive. Let's have a look at this rendered. I think the most noticeable part in this image is that you have to make great lighting so it looks like it's shot uh, in space. So let's darken the, the environment um, texture and let's add a sunlight. This, of course, is the real sun. Um, this is a, a pu purely aesthetic question. I'd like to, to make a small little edge lighting at the top of the planet and you should be able to see the shadow the planet casts on the rings. So I rotate the sun accordingly and very important to increase the intensity since it's very strong and it should reflect back from the rings on the planet and illuminate the whole scene. Let's uh, increase the angle of the sun, though the shadows are a bit softer and not as harsh. This might not be the case in, in real photographs, um, but I think this is an artistic piece. Let's add an area light. Uh, again, this is not uh, true to nature. Let's increase its intensity by a, a lot. Um, this is not true to nature, of course, but um, this is an aesthetic render and um, nothing about this should be photo real. So let's add a let's add this area light and position it to, yeah, just use it as a fill light to fill up the shadows and make it look a bit more interesting. I'd like to position it off camera so it just illuminates the side of a planet. Okay, now let's give our planet a bit more resolution to work with. Uh, I add a subdivision surface modifier, press Control L to match all modifiers with the rings as well. So everything looks a bit smoother. And now let's create the, the satellites, of course. Um, Saturn has a lot of moons, I think. If I'm not mistaken, it's about 82 moons. Um, I never thought that, but as apparently there are so much. I'm just gonna make two of them. And um, yeah, these are the two largest moons. They are pretty huge in, in real life, I think. So you have to get the scale right. For our background, let's download an uh, image of the Milky Way from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. These are the guys who sent the satellites um, into space and go into Blender's uh, preferences and enable the images, import images as planes add-on. And now let's press Shift A and add a new image as plane and select the image we've downloaded before. It is indeed a very large file. That's very important because we need the resolution so that it, that it looks good. Let's set it to shadeless and drop it into Blender. Let's scale it up so that it fits the camera and rotate it. Since as Aesthetically speaking, I think if the Milky Way crosses crosses the planet, uh, we've got a cool symmetry. Of course, make sure that it's behind your planet and that it doesn't intersect the planet. Now, for shading, let's first go into our shading settings for the background. Uh, at the moment, it's a bit too intense, of course. I'm gonna add a hue and saturation value node and um, yeah, make the hue, uh, set the hue to 0.6 so that it's a bit more yellow and decrease the saturation by a lot and again the value by a lot. So it's just um, in the background. In real life you wouldn't be able to see the stars I think or you would be able to see just a few stars but again this is an aesthetic render. Let's go to color management and set the 
filming look to medium contrast to give it a bit of base contrast. And with an RGB curves node, let's further enhance the background image so that it's just this faint, faint view of the Milky Way in the background. Let's have a look at it in rendered view, but I think this looks good. So now let's create a new material for our planet. We will now create the planet material of Saturn. Select our principal shader and add in a new noise texture. This will be the base for these rings um, because there are again uh, these lines and these, these swirly lines which go around the planet. Mm, so to our noise node add a new mapping node. With node wrangler enabled you can press ctrl shift t to do this. And now let's increase the scale on the x-axis. This is of course a good basis now for these lines which go around the whole planet. Let's create a map range node. This is basically a node which um, yeah, sets the contrast, right? Let's make everything that's black, black, and everything that's white, white. So this uh, can be used further down the line. And now and I think the next thing is to decrease the size of these, these lines a bit, because at the moment they are a bit too small. So let's play around with the size and now you can really see where this goes. Yeah, and now let's rotate our whole planet. There are of course ways to do this in the shader editor, but I think at the moment this was the easiest one. I've simply rotated it around the local y-axis of the planet. Now let's drop in a color ramp node. And in there, we're now going to give our planet the typical colors of Saturn. There are a lot of brownish tones, uh, skin color-like uh, uh, tones. Some are lighter, some are darker, some are a bit saturated. Um, and you can place, uh, place it wherever you want. You can get a bit creative with that. And now let's plug it into our principal shader and have a look at this rendered. I think this is pretty good for, for the start. Let's decrease the specularity since the planet of course is not so glossy, but that, don't reduce it to, to zero, but uh, increase the roughness a bit. And this should look fine in this case. Let's add in a bit of bump mapping, not a whole much, um, and connect our, our new, newly created texture as an input. Connect this with our principal shader and give it just a little bit of, of bump mapping. Of course, this, this is a lot, a lot, and uh, I, I just want a, a little bit of bump mapping. If we have a closer look at that, you can see just right here, if we turn it off and on again, I think you can see the difference. It's just this, these little details which finally make the difference. So now for the rings, select them, create a new material, rings, and this gets a lot more interesting since this shader is not, not the usual kind of shader you create. Let's add in a gradient texture and set it to spherical. At the moment, this doesn't match with our, our mesh. Let's drop in a new mapping node and connect it to the object mapping. This will center our gradient. So all the, the rim is dark and the center part is light. Let's give this a bit more contrast. I think this node is unnecessary. I, I did it in, in the tutorial, but uh, I think in the final piece I disabled it again. And with this, this texture as a base, we're now again gonna add a noise texture. As you can see, it's just this this usual noise. Um, we're gonna give this a bit more contrast, but there's nothing like these rings at the moment, but this is the trick in, in this case. We now will plug in our gradient texture as a vector. Um, and this is a bit unusual because you normally don't do these uh, type of things, but in this case it works and it does the job. Now um, let's make a bit more room and create a mix shader um, because we now want to make some parts of the mesh transparent and some are opaque, of course. So um, let's add a trans transparent BSDF shader and connect it to our mix node. 
And as a factor, we're now gonna take our ring texture. It's a bit bit um, bit uh, bad at the moment, so we we're gonna increase this effect by just playing around a bit with the color ramp. And now you can really see there are some parts which are transparent and others which aren't. And now let's increase the scale and do this a lot. So um, most of the the rings should be visible, and there are just some some um, parts that are transparent. Let's play around a bit with roughness and distortion to, to give it a bit more organic look. And this is everything for the transparency. Now let's work on the shader itself since we need to create the illusion that there are a lot of rings. And we do this by simply creating a new set of noise and color ramp and increasing the, the size of the noise shader, um, really make it a lot larger. And as you see here, I reverse the effect of this first color ramp. Let's really increase the size of these rings or decrease the size in this case, increase the amount of rings which are visible. And this will finally be the base for, for this illusion we will create of a lot of rings. Let's give it a bit more contrast and plug it into our principal shader. Let's have a look at it in the final render. At the moment, it's not very strong. So we just need to move our color ramp a bit around and do some, some things to, to intensify this effect. For example, uh, we can add a, a bump mapping again. Um, so let's search for bump and use our ring texture for our bump mapping. Plug this into the normal input of our principal shader, decrease the intensity of the bump mapping a bit. And now you should be able to see this in action. Now let's make a bit more room right here and move this down a bit and let's duplicate our noise connect it to our gradient texture for yet another set of rings now let's have a look at our noise texture let's add in another map range so i'm not happy with the contrast at the moment i want the lighter parts to be a bit lighter and the darker ones to be a bit darker essentially increasing the contrast more like this because now we are going to create the color of the rings because actually in uh, in the real planet there are a lot of colors in the rings, they are not all the same color. And for that, let's decrease the size, the scale of, of the rings a bit, um, because not every ring has a different color, but um, it's, it's more like uh, in, in these blocks, like this. And to now prepare this for our, our color, I think we again need to add a, a map range node right here to, to, to enhance the contrast because we're uh, later on gonna add a color ramp node with all the different colors, uh, a bit similar like we did it uh, for the planet itself. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. And now we are again at the same place we were a few minutes ago. We now need to plug some colors into our color ramp. Uh, in this case, I sample the original planet to make my life a bit easier. This is just creative directing. Um, play some lighter ones, play some darker ones in the color ramp and try to make it look good. I think with that, our base color is done. I just decrease the size of the rings a bit because it's, it's too colorful at the moment. Let's add in a mix node, mix color node and mix these smaller rings with the color of our color ramp 
change the blend mode and play a bit around with the intensity of, uh, of this effect. And now um, the color gets applied to our rings, as you can see here. I'd like to make them a bit lighter by using the color ramp. And now let's plug it into the mix shader. Very important to decrease the specular intensity of our principal shader to zero because um, the sun uh, currently reflects a lot in the rings and increase the roughness as well. Let's add in a RGB curves node and give our rings a bit more contrast, the color, color of our rings, especially since it's a bit weak at the moment. Play around with that. And now let's create some smaller rings. Um, we could do this with textures, but there's an easier way. Just simply duplicate the outer edge loop of our ring, of our disk, and extrude it and use this extruded part to place it around our ring segments to just give it a bit more visual interest because it's a bit difficult to create this with shaders and this is a easy way and in rendered view I think it looks great. For the final rendering I'd like to set the samples to 200 Disable adaptive sampling since this will ruin our background, uh, our star background, but I'll keep image denoising on and press F12 to render our image. Now let's jump into the compositor and make some final little adjustments to our image. Let's create a new viewer node, a small little tip is to press shift and drag your right mouse to connect two nodes together. Let's first enhance the contrast of the image a bit by adding a curves adjustment, set it to film like and draw a small little S curve, which increases the contrast by a bit, not much, since I think it was a bit too light, especially in the shadows. Second node will be a hue and saturation node, since I think at the moment it is a bit too saturated. And our final node after decreasing a saturation will be a glare node. The glare node is used to add a little glow to the image. So it looks a bit more realistic. Play a bit around with the threshold and the size so that it's just like a lens artifact. And with that done, I think this wraps up today's tutorial. That's how you make Saturn with its rings and blender. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Download the project files in the description below. If you're new to this channel, maybe consider subscribing because I post a cool blender tutorial every week. And thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.